Welcome back everybody, this is Kesma Gustin. In the last part, we did three quests, one of which involved talking with Lark and killing some dragons, another one of which involved escorting Bud to see some wisdoms, and the third one in involved uh, going to the Bone Fortress on a field trip. So, in this part, we are going to kill some more dragons. As you can see, we have a very fluffy monster with us. Now, we are going to be heading back to the Bone Fortress to kill the dragon. And it actually requires you to have a pet. Either a, any pet will do. I just happen to have this one on hand. And I'm going to use it. Or I believe a golem will also work if you wish to invest the money in said golem. I personally do not. And quite frankly, this will probably be the last time I ever let my pet out of its cage. So, enjoy it while it lasts. I sense something. And again, what was that strange voice? What happened? Uh, actually... And flashback. Or just various communications between people. I thought it was a flashback. The fade out made it seem like it was going to be a flashback, but it's not. And oh my goodness, what was that? It was a very scary noise. Uh, so what do we do when we hear very scary noises? We investigate. And if we go towards the very scary noise, we will find a very scary bone face and a very scary sword that just appears and a very scary set of armor that just materializes and floating white text the ghost of nemesis oh dear so we have just finished or just started just finished we have just started this quest and we are already fighting a boss this is not a dragoon we have come to see Jajara let us through never oh my goodness he actually started with never I was that was just a shot in the dark. I believe this guy is called Skeletal Soldier. I was going to call him the Black Knight, and I probably will still call him the Black Knight. He is not terribly difficult. He has a rocket punch, which is quite frankly a little badass. Um, other than that, I think he hits a little bit tough, a little bit hard, but he's not anything too challenging. And this quest actually will have the highest number of bosses. Uh, in a single quest I think we have encountered so far. So this is just the first of many, so look forward to that. But as you can see, we're kind of tooling on him and our rabbi is already dead because he's level 1. Lark, get out of here! Hooray! I got all the experience. So now that he's dead, we have free reign into the Bone Fortress. And we are about to see why it requires three people. As you can see, there are three switches. Looks like some kind of trap. Careful here. And our rabbi will just go straight ahead and trigger said trap. And oh my goodness, everybody's been separated. And it is now our duty to find them. And I don't believe we can press the buttons right now. So we just need to wander around these halls aimlessly looking for our party members that have gone missing because of the trap that was laid out for us and it's relatively straightforward uh, I'm not a huge fan of this quest mostly because I don't like using pets but this uh, surprisingly enough even though it's it's a fortress uh, the bone fortress is actually fairly easy to navigate and we got the angelic lumberjack hooray uh, we're going to ignore that now because, quite frankly, I don't know which special techniques I have and have not learned yet. And I don't really want to dig out my list to look for them, so I'll just put that on the back burner for right now. But in this room, it looks like there's not a whole lot, but if you talk to this skull, or skull on the ground, a menacing fire will start heading towards it. So, you youngins were trapped in the Bone Fortress too. I'll help you out. If you're ever lost, just ask my friends. They'll help you out. So now we can go through this door, and that's the main mechanic of this game. Even though this guy looks like the boss we just fought, he's actually on our side. And we want to follow this way because we will come back and meet up with our rabbi. 
And we have now found one out of the two party members that have gone missing. And now that we have two party members, we can hit the two switches and carry on through the rest of this quest. There's really not a whole lot to it. So I'm going to start rambling about stuff. Uh, it's been about a week or more since I last recorded and it's not really anybody's fault but mine. I just really haven't been particularly in the mood to do much of anything. Um, but I'm back to it now and I'm actually kind of enjoying it even though I just started. But anyway, I'm about to be, or I've got about a month left before I start school again. And I was kind of hoping to have this wrapped up before that happened. But a uh, current projection is it's not going to happen. So, anyway, here we are in this elevator. And the fire is the elevator master. I believe we are already on the first floor. I think we want to go to the second floor. Uh, if I'm wrong, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, doesn't look like this is the right place. So we can just go in and talk to him again. Uh, where do you want to go? Let's go to the third floor. Why not? But anyway, I'm hoping to I'm hoping to knock out quite a few parts in this recording session. Are you looking for Lark? Who said that? What's with everybody teleporting? I know. He's an evil person. So this is the boss two of a lot. This is Sierra, and she is a very annoying lady. She's not particularly challenging, except for when she combos you like that. And it's best to try to hit her with as many specials as you can. Uh, and also, because she doesn't get a massive health bar, it's kind of difficult to gauge how far along through the fight you are. So you kind of just have to keep wailing on her and hoping for the best. Um, but yeah... There's really not a whole lot to say. As you can see, my rabbi is already dead again. It is level 1, and I got... I Back when I was having a lot of difficulty recording these parts, uh, I, I must have gotten confused with what I already recorded and what I had done and what I hadn't done, so I never actually set my rabbi to graze and get it a couple more levels, although, to be honest, it wouldn't have helped that much at all. And we are almost done. Oh, she's she's kind of kicking my ass. I'm not too happy about that. And she's gone, but she's not actually gone. By the gods, your powers are too strong. But someday, I will stop you. I'd like to see you try. And we get a key blade. And I believe Lark is on this floor. Nope. He is not. We will be coming back here much later. Well, by much later, I mean about three or four minutes, probably. So now our quest to find Lark continues. Where do we want to go? First floor, why not? Now is not a good time. Okay, fine. Let's go to the second floor then. Jeez, so picky. Wasn't I just on the second floor? Huh. I think Lark is over here somewhere. I, I just got finished saying I don't get lost here very often. Oh, there he is. Let's ignore him and get the treasure, which is an ash, I believe. Yes. Now, a fun thing about that ash, after we wake Lark up, complaining about his sister, I can't believe I would fall for such a trap. It's okay, it's in your programming. Anyway, fun fact about that ash is, and it's another reason why I picked the two-hand axe as my weapon, uh, back when I was learning to play this game, I did a, couple, a bit of research, and I was looking at uh, super powerful weapons that you can forge. And... Um, one of the weapons that you could forge was a two-hand axe, and it required three ashes as well as a bunch of other stuff to make. And the unfortunate thing is, 
There are only two Ash, as far as I can tell, in the entire game. So... It's kind of a tease. You have to play through the game again. And there is a new game plus. Uh, minor spoilers, I guess. But... I've never actually had the patience to forge the weapon and play through the game again, so... I don't actually know what it does. Anyway, we had to go back down to the first floor because we needed to press the three buttons and now we can go up to the top floor because obviously where's the boss going to be but at the top floor and it's actually up this staircase but before fighting the final boss of this quest we have one other boss standing in our way in the ribcage hallway no rabbit is just gonna happily bounce along bring a whole army if you wish you will not pass okay Gandalf hmm why it's Lurk the Conqueror well, well, if it isn't Deathbringer. Now I see. So you are the servant of Draconis. You should be quite an opponent. Ha 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 ha. To think <clears throat> we would meet again like this. After a hundred years. And oh my goodness, scary skeletons in the Bone Fortress. What else is going to be here? So this is the boss three of... Four-ish. Uh, Deathbringer. Deathbringer? The Deathbringer, sorry. Uh, he is actually a lot easier than Sierra. And as far as I can tell, he doesn't do a whole lot other than try his hardest to pretend like he's doing damage to you. And if you hit him with your specialist of special techniques, he will go down pretty much without a fight. And leave you completely capable of murdering the dragon Jajara. Ta ha ha! Most impressive. You just might be the one. You've nothing to lose. But I suppose that neither do I. Oh, very ominous. 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 And just like that, we are thrust into the throne of corpses. Speaking of ominous, I actually can't tell if the bo best, bleh, if the boss music is playing. I have my music down as far as I possibly can have it. And we have to have these two fighting about the power of mana and earthquakes and stuff falling from the sky. And how exactly I didn't get crushed to death, I will never know. But this is the boss 4 of 4 and the boss of this quest, Jajara, the dragon who isn't very difficult. And he's actually easier, in my opinion, than Activator in the for the sole fact that he doesn't fly around all over the place and make you question your sanity. And the rabbi is already dead, which really is to be expected because he's too stupid to not stand in the way of the fatal death blasts of lightning by Jajara. There's some nice sta sta statues. See, I was gonna... I I was going to say statues, but then I realized that they were probably busts. Busts is probably the better term to use for them, so I was going to... I mixed statues and busts and I got stats. And that was just weird, and then I, I made it weird, and I couldn't, I had to commit. So, he's almost dead, we got him, hooray! Backflip, moonsault, backflip, moonsault, backflip, moonsault, we're done! Experience! Everything is grand, and we're all so happy! But unless my ears deceive me, the music hasn't quite stopped yet, and oh my goodness! Red, green, blue, those three colors never mean anything good. Neither does that, and neither does the creepy floating mouth, bone, skeletal, demon thing picking up the stats that we just commented on. And this is part two of the two-part fight that is Jajara. If you couldn't figure that out already, I weep for you. Uh, he is really not any more difficult or less difficult than before. I'm going to see if I can hit him with a sparkling rampage. It doesn't look like I'm going to get my timing right. Actually, I might. 
Oh, what do you know I did? Uh, but, like every other boss, special techniques is probably the way you want to go. Uh, I seem to be stuck against the wall, which is very unfortunate. Uh, luckily I'm out of it. I don't really remember uh, what abilities he has, obviously. Uh, the ability to cause earthquakes and do a quarter of your health with one hit, which is pretty devastating, so don't get hit by that too many times or else you will find yourself on the ground unable to get back up. But luckily we are not in that situation and I believe we get more experience if our bunny would get out of the way. Please. Please. Thank you. And just like that, it is all over. Now, fear not. This time, you'll be you'll rest forever in the underworld. I knew I sensed the power of mana here. Ooh, he's a Jedi, opening that gate with his mind. Stupid rabbi, going so slowly. Ooh, and he opened the door with his mind. Amazing grace. So, thanks to this guy, the herbs around here are imbued with great power. And Jajara tried to hide that by building this castle. How greedy. Greedy? You're the one going around stealing all the mana from all the dragons. What do we do now? Now, we do the same thing. We have to go find the last dragon, and anybody that gets in our way will die. Don't think about it too much, and we get the green cane. Now, we get to go and enjoy the rest of our life. The Ghost of Nemesis, the end. Pretty easy quest. Uh, as you can see, it's it's not the shortest quest, so I was I was a fool to think that I could fit it in the last part. But we did it now, and it's over, and we have a story to tell to our cactus, and we never have to see our stupid rabbit again. And we got our last special technique before our last couple of special techniques. So that's something you can brag about to your friends. If you want to. And the Lark is still with us and he'll probably be like, hey, you can't escape what you don't know. Is our rabbi still following us? I didn't think that they were allowed in our house. Huh. Who knew? I'll have to deposit him once I'm done here. Skelly Snappy. That's very uh, disturbing for a young cactus to say. But with that, I'm going to call it an episode here. Uh, if you like this part, please hit like. If you want to watch me kill some more dragons, uh, subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next one.